Uh, joining me right now is Oklahoma Senator, member of the Senate Homeland Security, Finance, Intelligence, and Ethics Committees. James Lankford is with us. Senator, it's great to see you. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Thanks, Maria. Good to see you again. Well, Anthony Blinken just said uh, they're going to protect the homeland. They didn't protect the homeland after China uh, refused to admit a cover-up of COVID-19 uh, after it escaped from the lab, and then uh, the CCP would not allow any investigation into it. They did not protect the homeland when uh, China was setting up these police stations across the country. And, of course, there was no protecting of the homeland when they allowed a balloon, a surveillance tool, to fly across the country before shooting it down after uh, the balloon already sent uh, information back to Beijing in real time. How do you see this administration protecting the homeland? Yeah, so I would say the same way Anthony Blinken just said it. He said they're trying to monitor what's going on. They're monitoring a balloon coming across. They're monitoring COVID-19 being released. They're monitoring China actually uh, aggressively moving against our economy and what they're doing in other areas of the world. Monitoring doesn't stop it. That's just saying, hey, we're aware of it. We need to actually engage in ways to actually stop the aggression against the United States. And if Anthony Blinken wanted to make a good statement, instead of flying in an aircraft over into China, he should have taken a hot air balloon over into China and landed right there and to make a clear statement from the start. Oh, wow. Secretary of State uh, Blinken is claiming that the relationship between the U.S. and Beijing is now stable. He did meet with Xi Jinping for about uh, a half an hour on Monday, we're told. President Biden and Blinken are now giving China's leaders a pass, a free pass for that spy balloon incident. Was there ever any pushback on the spy balloon? Not that we can tell on it. It was very clear this was a spy balloon that was intended to be able to come and examine the United States and military facilities up close and personal. Uh, it only come out, uh, came out, as you remember, not because the administration admitted it. They were, quote, unquote, monitoring it as it came across Alaska and as it came all the way across Canada, then dipped down in the United States. It came out because a local reporter actually saw it in the sky and then released it and it started getting out. So our free press is actually what got this out, not actually the administration. I think they would have just, quote, unquote, monitored it and just ignored it all the way across the country. So at the end of the day, we need clear statements about human rights violations, about what's happening in the economy. We're not going to be energy dependent on China. Uh, we're going to be energy independent as a nation. And this administration wants to turn us from being dependent on Middle Eastern oil uh, to now being dependent on Chinese uh, lithium. And we just cannot do that. We've got to produce our own and we've got to be able to make it very, very clear we're not going to be dependent on China. Well, I mean, look, the CCP has all these new laws that enable it to go and march into any foreign company that it wants and steal the intellectual property and raid the place. They did it with Bain Capital. Uh, and uh, that's only one of, of, of many companies that they've done it. They've got the PRC counter-espionage law, the anti-monopoly law, the national intelligence law of the People's Republic of China, the PRC anti-foreign sanctions law, the unreliable entities list. I mean, all of these can land you in a prison in China. Yep, they sure can. And plus, in, in addition to all that, if you're a Chinese company, then you have to be able to turn over all data, all information at any point to the Communist Party. So you've got any entity that's doing business in the United States, the Communist Party also has access to all of that information as well. So Chinese government's buying up land all across the United States. Uh, there are all these different aggressive actions are happening on our economy, what's happening with pharmaceuticals, energy, uh, with innovation, with all the intellectual property. If you're an American company and you're manufacturing in China, I've encouraged American companies over and over again to diversify where they're going. If they're going to sell to China from there, that's their own decision. But if they're planning to sell to anywhere else outside of China, they need to be aware the Chinese Communist Party at any point can cut off their supplies going out of the country and, and actually shut that down, as we saw during COVID-19. Uh, so companies need to think twice about having a logistics chain that runs through China. And I wonder if this meeting with the Prime Minister of India is part of that, encouraging India to create the infrastructure needed for supply chains. I, I would hope so. I would hope with the Prime Minister of India, it's not only talking about religious freedom issues that they've got right now, it's a challenge, but also supply chain issues. They've got a great economy, great opportunities, but also they're buying oil from Russia right now and literally sending cash to Russia that's facilitating the attacks on Ukraine. I would hope that we would bring that up with the Prime Minister of India as well. Well, I'm just trying to understand, though, why we have such a soft approach to communist China with all of these provocations from the spy surveillance balloon to the years of intellectual property theft that have cost our company $600 billion a year at least. And, and yet, 
We don't have any accountability. The president has still not brought up COVID-19 leaking from a Wuhan lab and insisting an investigation. He hasn't addressed the spy balloon, and now they say they're moving on. Is it because he's compromised after his family has taken in all this money from communist China, among other foreign nationals? We know Hunter well, Biden is not expected to serve any prison time. He reached his plea deal on the federal gun and tax crime charges. Uh, you've got celebrities like Pete Rose, Kodak Black, Mike the Situation, uh, Sorrentino, all committing similar crimes. They served prison time. Christopher Bedford writes in The Federalist, Hunter Biden's plea deal is a cover-up disguised as justice. Senator, do you agree? Yeah, I do agree, actually, in the, the most basic elements. When you start talking about the foreign policy to China, quite frankly, this administration has a weak foreign policy worldwide. We don't have strength anywhere in the world right now in, uh, in our influence. So that's that's one issue. But the Hunter Biden issue, especially on the gun crime, when you lie on a gun form, this administration keeps talking about gun crimes, gun crimes, gun crimes. We've got to do more uh, to be able to prosecute gun crimes. And then literally immediately when gun crimes come to their front door, they immediately just dismiss them and say, oh, no, we're we're not going to pay attention to any gun crimes like that. This sets a precedent for every one of those lie and buy forms for the rest of this administration and multiple others to be able to say we don't prosecute if you actually lie on your gun form. That is the essential part of the first part of the buy, and they just basically neutered it. Well, I mean, look, it, the, the bottom line is how does the DOJ defend prosecuting income tax fraud without actually investigating the income? and where that income came from. Can you say, oh, Hunter Biden, you didn't pay taxes on all these millions without saying, where did these millions come from? What is your business? You have no business, and yet you got tens of millions of dollars from foreign adversaries? That is correct. And it, again, where did all this money come from? How did that money actually get there? What was the influence that actually connected? What was his experience on energy, for instance? And he's actually hired by the Burisma company to be an energy person on it when he had no background in energy. There's a lot of obvious questions here that people are looking for. And again, for many individuals that are in those old classic mob cases that were out there, they started with prosecutions on all the crimes on tax evasion and not paying taxes, but then they went right back to what, where the income was coming from. That seems not be happening here. So again, it's, it's one more time that we look at it and say they're not prosecuting and we have to ask the question, why? Well, how many times can we be asking this question? Senator, you sit on the Senate Homeland Security Committee. Is influence peddling a risk and a threat to our homeland? It is 100% a risk to our homeland. That's why so many committees are currently looking at this, especially the House, where they've got the ability for the Judiciary Committee and for oversight committees to actually get documents, subpoena those, to be able to go through that. Clearly, the Democrat-run Senate is trying to ignore this in every way that they can. The House is able to step up and to say, along with a lot of other questions on our economy and what's happening national security and border, and to do that important work, but to also ask the questions that a lot of Americans are asking. All right, Senator, we'll be watching. Thanks very much for being here this morning. Senator James Langford is in D.C. Thank you, sir. Good to see you again. We'll be right